the worst shark attack in history. In 1945, a U.S. naval ship was sunk by a Japanese submarine, but the ship's sinking was just the beginning of the sailors' nightmare. The USS Indianapolis was built in New Jersey and launched in 1931. At a massive 186 meters long and around 10,000 tons in weight, it was equipped with nine 8-inch guns and eight 5-inch anti-aircraft guns. In late July 1945, the Indianapolis was sent on a high-speed secret mission to deliver uranium to U.S. Air Base Tinian in the Western Pacific. This uranium was for the Hiroshima atomic bomb, which was dropped just one week later. Nobody on board knew what the cargo was, including the personnel who guarded it round the clock. After completing the delivery, the ship was then sent to Lady Gulf in the Philippines. Indianapolis was around halfway on its journey to Lady Gulf when, just after midnight on July 30, 1945, a Japanese Imperial Navy submarine launched two torpedoes at her. They struck her on her starboard side, right under her fuel tanks. The resultant explosions caused massive damage. Indianapolis was torn in half. Still traveling at 17 knots, the Indianapolis began taking on massive amounts of water, the ship sank in just 12 minutes. Of the 1,196 men aboard, about 300 went down with the ship. Only about 900 made it into the water alive. Their ordeal, what is considered the worst shark attack in history, was just beginning. Surviving the torpedo attack was just the start of the ordeal for the surviving crew, who could only cling on to debris and the few life rafts that were scattered in the water. A number were killed after being engulfed in oil coughed up from the engines. The living searched for the dead floating in the water and used their life jackets for survivors who had none. Hoping to keep some semblance of order, survivors began forming groups, some small, some over 300, in the open water. As the sun rose on July 30, the survivors bobbed in the water. Life rafts were scarce. Many sailors, scorching in the sun, fatally drank the salty sea water and died from dehydration and too much sodium in the blood. Many died from hypothermia due to the freezing conditions at night, while others were driven to desperation and killed themselves. Some were offered a little sustenance when they found rations such as crackers and spam amongst the wreckage of the ship. However, hundreds of sharks were drawn to the noise of the wreckage and the scent of blood in the water. Though many species of shark live in the open water, none is considered as aggressive as the oceanic white tip. The first night, the sharks focused on the floating dead. But the survivors' struggles in the water only attracted more and more sharks, which could feel their motions through a biological feature known as a lateral line. Receptors along their bodies that pick up changes in pressure and movement from hundreds of yards away. And as the victim's blood spread through the water, more sharks, which can smell blood up to three miles away, were attracted to the defenseless sailors, creating a feeding frenzy. As the sharks turned their attentions toward the living, especially the injured and the bleeding, Sailors tried to quarantine themselves away from anyone with an open wound, and when someone died, they would push the body away, hoping to sacrifice the corpse in return for a reprieve from a shark's jaw. Many survivors were paralyzed with fear, unable even to eat or drink from the meager rations they had salvaged from their ship. One group of survivors made the mistake of opening a can of spam, but before they could taste it, the scent of the meat drew a swarm of sharks around them. They got rid of their meat rations rather than risk a second swarming. The sharks fed for days, with no sign of rescue for the men. Navy intelligence had intercepted a message from the Japanese submarine that had torpedoed the Indianapolis describing how it had sunk an American battleship along the Indianapolis route, but the message was disregarded as a trick to lure American rescue boats into an ambush. In the meantime, the Indianapolis survivors learned that they had the best odds in a group and ideally in the center of the group. The men on the margins or, worse, alone, were the most susceptible to the sharks. As the days passed, many survivors succumbed to heat and thirst, or suffered hallucinations that compelled them to drink the seawater around them, a sentence of death by salt poisoning. Those who so slaked their thirst would slip into madness, foaming at the mouth as their tongues and lips swelled. They often became as great a threat to the survivors as the sharks circling below, Many dragged their comrades underwater with them as they died. After 11 a.m. on their fourth day in the water, 
a Navy plane flying overhead spotted the Indianapolis survivors and radioed for help. That evening, after nearly five days of constant shark attacks and dehydration, seven ships arrived and pulled the other remaining survivors to safety. Of the Indianapolis original 1,196-man crew, only 317 remained. It is estimated that almost 150 died from the shark attacks. The ordeal of the Indianapolis survivors remains the worst maritime disaster in U.S. naval history. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe for similar videos in future.